President Buhari has ruled out negotiating with bandits. He said that his government would continue to deal decisively with insurgents, bandits and kidnappers who have continued to hold the country to ransom. This rejection came against the backdrop of demands by Islamic cleric Sheikh Gumi and Zamfara State Governor Belu Matawali. Well, joining us to discuss this is Islamic cleric Sheikh Abubakar Gumi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. Great. Let me just cut straight to the chase. Of course, if you were watching the first conversation, we're still talking about the level of insecurity in the country and banditry. Um, going into the forest, speaking with these bandits, and uh, um, dialoguing with them, um, are you doing this on your own accord? Is it an independent thing? Are you working in tandem with the government in the affected state? What exactly uh, is, you know, the case? Okay, uh, well, good evening. I started this by on, on my own, seeing that uh, let me give my own small little quarter in trying to see we have peace in, in the region. So when I started up, uh, I, I realized that there are state governments that have adopted, adopted the same system. And uh, I was invited to also uh, add my own quota in trying to see that we have peace in this uh, ravaged states, Zamfara, Kebi, and uh, Niger states. Uh, were you not afraid in any way going across, getting across to these bandits or these said men because of what they were said to have done? Um, you had the audacity to walk into the forest, the same forest that a lot of our security agencies yes. have not been able to go into. What gave you that audacity? I mean, it's, it's such a, uh, a serious issue to take on by one person when we have security agencies to do that. Yes, yes. Uh, you see, uh, when you approach them in a religious form, uh, when you approach them, you want to teach them religion, you want to speak to them, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a language in which by you are trying to solve their problems, you want to hear their grievances, they will give you the hearing uh, and they, they will not harm you. But if you go there as a spy, or you go there uh, as somebody uh, you know, with hostility, then, that's, that's then they will fight back. Or you go there as clerics, to preach to them, to show them the bad ways which they have uh, fallen into, and to also listen to their grievances. Uh, we try to show them, yes, we respect them as human beings, because if you want somebody to listen to you, you have to show him respect. Uh, you can see, we purposely bring them close to us, not to be far away like uh, Master and his followers. We want, to, want them to feel at home so that they can vomit whatever they have at heart so that we can listen to them and see how we can transfer that to the society, so that the society can be able to, after rehabilitation, and teaching them, uh, what do you call it, teaching them things that uh, they can live on, because not all of them can be hard men. There are not enough cattle to go around, uh, professions to, to learn, like misery, electricians, vulcanizing. We have to introduce this to them uh, so that uh, they, they can integrate into the society. I'm interested to know, I mean, there are several people who are like them who are in our society. They are in our communities. They're not taking up arms. They're not kidnapping people. They're not getting into sharp practices. But that's a side. Um, you're also saying that you go to them because you want them to divulge their... Um, whatever their problems are, what their the demands are. In all of your dealings with these people, what could they possibly have said their demands are? What would be their grievances for undertaking such... Um, I mean, it, it's, it's something that is causing insecurity. They're kidnapping students, they're kidnapping teachers, they are uh, attacking people on their rice farms and leaving them for dead. What could be the excuse for doing all of these dastardly acts? Yes, you see, what you have to understand is that 
these people are unskilled. These people have no any formal or even informal education. So you are dealing with a human being who is raised up in the forest, who has little knowledge of the consequence of what he's doing. He's just slightly short of being an animal. I'm sorry to say that, and I hope they don't hear me. Uh, so you see, the way you treat him is completely different from the way you treat uh, town dwellers. In the town, even if you are jobless, whatever it is, that uh, civilization will creep into you that uh, you see barbarism in what you do. If you look at the history of mankind, look at the, uh, the barbarians, how they ransack Rome. Look at the barbarians, how they finish with Europe completely. And look at the Mongols and the Tatar, how they have ravaged people. Because why? Because they're barbarians. They don't have any education. And this is exactly what we are, leading, we are, we are facing in a small microsome. So we have to deal with it with very careful, uh, what do you call it? Um, we have to be very careful how we handle these people. Uh, since they don't have any formal education or informal education even. So, um, so this is, is this the grounds for which you're asking uh, for amnesty? Uh, is, is this the uh, is this the grounds that you're asking uh, for amnesty moral because moral education or even the modern education these are the people you i'm sorry sheikh but i'm gonna put take that question again um the is this is I this can't hear you. yes is this the grounds for which you're asking for amnesty because understanding what amnesty means it means you're saying these people should be totally forgiven and rehabilitated into society what happens to what they've done to people? Like I made reference to people killed on their rice farms, people being slaughtered, people being taken away from um, their homes in their sleep. And there was a, a statement that you made some time ago saying that they didn't set out, they didn't mean to do these things, they were accidental. What exactly is accidental about all of these things that I have mentioned? We are not trying to justify what they do. Nobody can justify evil or crime at all, no justification for any crime. But when you're dealing with somebody who doesn't know, somebody who is ignorant, somebody, how do you manage him? How do you bring him out of his ignorance and show him the light? Such a case is completely different from other criminalities. You know, criminals that choose to be criminal, not are forced to be criminals by circumstances. Uh, every government is supposed to be responsible for the formal education up to a uh, secondary school level when well, nigeria we don't have that look at uh, bandits completely just slightly above uh animals in their in thinking and behavior so how can we say we go and uh, exterminate and kill them knowing that you see uh, as i've so i've told you i've read a lot of history uh, we have uh, uh, the first uh, muslim sociologist his name even Khaldo in his book and when they fight with civilized people the barbarians usually uh, win in the war for for many reasons they they win because a civilized person is careful but a barbarian is careless he doesn't even care about his life that's why the barbarians were able to ransack Rome and they were able to come into the Islamic cold and ravage everything what i saw there i saw barbarians huh. you see i i instead uh let me tell you something uh, when i realized these people are ready to lay down their arms they are ready to be educated because they're asking for schools you can see even the lady that uh, was kidnapped in uh, niger state she's there on the in the media when she was asked what did they say? They said, we need schools. We need hospitals. Their complaint is government, government. Hmm. And it's the government that neglected them. Not this government, all the governments, them. A fight that we cannot really truly subdue them. Hmm. Because look, they are barbarians. They are barbarians, we cannot subdue them. So why, since they are ready to put down their arms uh, and get an amnesty and 
why don't you do that and teach them but, bring them out from their ignorance but what's the guarantee them. what is the guarantee that these people if given amnesty would abide by the the rules or by um, whatever it is what is stated for them to follow what's i mean because these people seem to be lawless what's the guarantee that they will stick to the rules of the amnesty program if it be granted okay. in the first instance they, they become lawless. yes yes you see they become lawless when they are congregated together in one place but you see if there's an amnesty we are going to separate them this one will go to this school this one will go to that school we will make our forest safe and it uh, and give it handy over to the security you see but if you have the forest which is unguided which is unmanned and you don't have presence of government there and they they congregate together and they have no scholar among them then this is the bomb you have but once you give them an amnesty amnesty allows them to drop the weapons so that uh, they will not be prosecuted and they will feel safe uh then we can do ways to disperse them we don't allow them to we don't allow anybody now to congregate in the in the forest this then, way we can tackle this problem rather than confrontation that we don't know the results so you're saying that we should totally jettison the law because i mean the the laws were written for for things like this what they, these men and men are doing is criminal some even call it terrorism okay, in fact let, that's let, what it is called me, it's terrorism. So you're saying yes, yes. that we should totally look away. The law should not come into force uh, on these men because what they have done is tantamount to terrorism. Yes, you see, uh, it's not something new in Nigeria. I've been comparing them to the kidnappings, to the bombings, to the things the Niger Deltas did. Vandalization of oil uh, pipes, which were built with millions of naira. We lost so much crippling Nigerian economy which uh, economy holding about 200 million and, people. And we haven't yes. lost anything to this bandits? Give them an amnesty. Give them an amnesty is the right thing. It's the right way rather than going into the creeks and start bombing them so, and killing them. So we haven't lost anything. I mean, human lives are most, much more important than oil installations. Don't you think so? Well, yes, it's more important human life. But you see... When you don't give them an amnesty and they let them drop their weapons, we will lose more and more human lives. You see, if you want to fight them, don't think, don't think it's so easy. Look at Boko Haram, rat tag army, and it's, uh, they're killing our soldiers. But well, if there's a peace, uh, we will not lose our soldiers like that. We're losing soldiers by, in fact, let me tell you, honestly speaking, I lose my relative, my relative in Zamfara, a soldier, a relative, 30, 35 of them were, were ambushed by these bandits and they were killed. My relative. I know I lost a relative as a result of their actions. But still, I'm ready to forgive if they are going to stop this action by a peace negotiation and we rehabilitate them. We teach them uh, uh, crafts so they can be vulcanizers, they can be electricians, they can be anything you want. Rather than to continue this way, and uh, it leads to more bloodshed, more suffering, and more uh, and, and more crimes. I'm imagining if the U.S. or any other country where they're terrorists, especially with the fact that most people are saying that these people, including the Sultan of Sokoto, uh, Alaja Saad Abubakar, who's saying that these people are not Nigerians. I'm imagining if America, for example, opened its doors to terrorists and gave them amnesty and then taught them some things, you know, um, uh, some handiwork or made them learn some trade. Would America be what America is today if every country that faces some form of terrorism forgives their terrorists? Will that country really be standing on its feet? Again, there are people who are criticizing you, who have criticized you, who have suggested that um, in any sane climb, a person who is advocating for amnesty for terrorists should be behind bars. What would you say about this? They are jokers. Well, is they, that... are, they, are, they are jokers that they, they, can they, you really fault, they can, want can you us, really fault they want them us to continue for... killing ourselves. But... I think only somebody who is joking. But can you really fault them? For example, <laughs> you're, you're, you're making the a point case. Is, if it's in America, it's America, America can never leave a joke of its population unlettered, without uh, education. Education is mandatory in America. 
And that's why you can never have this kind of group in America. If, you, if it's in America, they must be 100% criminal. But these people are pushed by circumstances of life into criminality. They, and if you talk to them, you don't want this life. They want to build, uh, take down their weapons. They want to be assimilated into the society. So why do we say no? Why? As for the victims, I said I am a victim of them. They, they took my brother. We have to pay around some of five million myself. And I've lost a soldier, a relative. Uh, it's just less than uh, two months ago in Zanfara. It was, it was an ambush. So I'm a victim of this vicious bloodletting. But I want an end to it. What is the best way an end to it? Is since I've talked to them and they told me they are ready to lay down their arms, ready, ready to lay down their arms. So why do we? So this is your so way of this is your way of getting justice for some this is your way of getting justice for the people you think and you that. lost, and that's by advocating for amnesty and forgiveness for the same people who have taken your the lives yes, of the just, your no, brother. No, the justice will come. Let me yourself. tell you how the justice will come. The justice will come when the government will compensate them. If you have evidence, I have evidence I've lost a soldier. I have, uh, you know that his body started even before we can retrieve him. His body is uh, almost changed. I, well, so, we, but, but he's documented, so we, government should pay for compensation for him. And uh, those who are to, proven to be victims of this, the government should be here because the government is supposed to protect people. And if it's not able to protect people, then it has to be here. The burden right. of their criminality and also let's not forget they are two victims they too are victims of uh what what do you exactly? call it? excesses we should not forget that yes you can be sitting in your well you, Sheikh, you don't know Sheikh Ahmed Gumi, i'm sorry no, no, we're out of time all of, all of them will tell you huh? I'm so sorry we're out of time. I want to thank you very much for taking out time of your tight channel to speak with us. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. Uh, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, I'll give you my take. Well, here's my take. We seem to be facing a cycle of crime and injustices meted out on innocent Nigerians, especially children. The perpetrators are getting more audacious by the day, knowing that our leaders are weak. They've taken advantage of the weakness to come and go as they please. And what's worse is that our children and women continually fall victim to these crimes. How do we say we have a leadership when it's not showing its prowess when we need it the most? Our brothers and sisters in the north are unable to sleep with both eyes closed for fear of these raiders, these bandits, these kidnappers and terrorists. Who will protect us if those who swore to protect uh, you know, and save us uh, seem to be overwhelmed or bereft of ideas on how to do so? Who do we run to? While we wail and scream at the top of our voices, hoping that they hear us, the criminals are smiling to the bank and re-strategizing on their new targets. Instead of being swift in arresting critics of our leaders, let's channel that energy to be 10 steps ahead of these terrorists and bring them to their knees. Let's read our country of this new wave of terrorism spreading like a wildfire before it's too late. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.